Hey there, it's Board Game Dave. Today we're taking a look at my entire want to buy list on Board Game Geek. This is my entire current wish list of board games, and I was surprised that there are only 21 games on this list, but I'll go through each of them one by one in alphabetical order. All right, let's get to it. First up, we have Abyss by Bruno Catala. This is an amazing game, super well designed. It's got so much going on. It's got hand management, set collection. It's got auction and bidding. It's got some push your luck elements in there. It's really beautiful. Beautiful, great little components with the pearl and the artwork on the cards. It's really great. You're trying to get these minions or followers and these special powers on these lords. It's really, really great. It's a little hard to explain right now, but uh, really lovely game. I played it many years ago and then played it a whole bunch on Board Game Arena and still don't have a copy. So Abyss, uh, definitely in my wish list. Number two, we have Agricola. This is a game that I played a lot on my iPad when I first got into board games, probably in 2019. Um, yeah, so I played the app version a whole bunch just you know against the uh, AI computer uh, opponents but Agricola is this great farming game you're collecting animals and putting them in pens and expanding your house I mean it's a, it's a, one of the OG worker placement games by Uwe Rosenberg but it's just fantastic great components you're doing some farming as well feeding your uh, family having more members of your family and so on and so forth oh that's great deluxe components um, but anyway really great again classic worker placement game uh, that I just don't have so Agricola all also in my collection of uh, want to buy games. Third, Century Golem Edition, Easter Mountains. Now, of course, this is the uh, sequel to Century Golem Edition, an amazing family game. I really enjoy this game. It's so fast, it's so quick, it's so easy to teach, very pleasant, but still fun for uh, advanced, you know, uh, experienced gamers. Hannah and I really love playing this game, but this, of course, is the sequel. Would you look at this? So, uh, each game in this series has kind of a different element. This one, of course, is kind of of tableau building, engine building. This one is uh, more route building, I think, but you're, uh, you know, setting up your little caravans and traveling across a map. So it's a little bit more spatial in that sense. Uh, and of course you can combine it with the first game in the series, uh, Century Golem Edition. So really fantastic. I love the concept here of uh, moving your caravan around the map to get these trade routes and things. So uh, that's number three. Number four is Century Golem Edition, An Endless World. So this is the third in the series and this one is worker placement so take a look at this you've got you know that same idea of kind of converting those gems to recruit these golems but you've got these worker placement spots and they open up throughout the game uh, and they get powerful uh, as they go and some of them you have to put two workers and then you can bump out other opponents workers with your own it's just amazing so much going on in this game and the best part again is that you can combine this game with the first game in the series and or the second game in the series you can combine them all if you wanted to. It's really fantastic. So many different ways to play this game. And again, the artwork's beautiful. The components are lovely. Uh, just a fantastic game, but you know, a new twist on those familiar mechanisms. Number five, Coloma, designed by Johnny Pack, who I've had the chance to interact with recently. He's an amazing guy and a great game designer. Coloma is set in the Wild West, which is one of my favorite themes. And you've got this great kind of action rondelle thing going on, and some of the actions boom or they bust, depending on where other players go, which is a really interesting uh, mechanic. You have to kind of predict where other people are going to go and, and try to go on your own space. It's just fantastic. Uh, there's also these bandits that come and you kind of have to cooperate to fight off the bandits and things, but you get more points if you uh, do it more effectively. It is so great. Um, that's Coloma. Uh, I played it, I think, once or twice a long time ago, and I just was hooked. Uh, the theme, the mechanisms, it all goes well. Uh, just lovely, uh, lovely way of combining theme and mechanics. So that is Coloma. Number six, Crown of Amara. Now, I don't hear too much about this game, but when I do hear about Crown of Amara, people are raving about it. So um, it's not the most original theme, I think is maybe why it hasn't gotten quite the attention it deserves. Uh, you're going around uh, kind of the... Um, the town collecting stone and wood and food and things like that. Uh, but that's what's happening on the one rondelle. On the other rondelle, on the other board, you're going around, uh, I guess, in the village and you're kind of converting goods and, and crafting goods and things like that. And essentially what you're trying to do is build houses and increase immigration into the town, into Amara. Um, and that's the idea. And at the end of the game, I believe it's... Mm, your population or your housing, whichever's lower is your score. So you have to kind of balance those two things. Anyway, it seems fantastic. I think I'm underselling it. It seems like an amazing game. I've watched so many videos. It looks great. 
I just haven't pulled the trigger yet. I think it's a little bit hard to find, maybe. So uh, that's Crown of Amara. Number seven, Darwin's Journey. Now, this is a 2022 game. I don't know if you're able to get a copy of this game yet, but I am so fascinated by the theme. I am uh, a big fan of Darwin and all that he contributed to the scientific community with his origin of the species, with all his observations in the Galapagos and all around uh, the world. But that is, of course, uh, the story of Darwin. And in this game, you are taking the role of Darwin's expedition team, I think, in the Galapagos and you're taking notes and observing the wildlife and writing letters um, back to scientific personalities, I suppose, <laughs> and all those kinds of things. A lot of Euro, you know, tropes, I suppose, uh, but really great theme. I love that they took this, you know, Darwin science research idea and implemented it into a board game. And it looks like they really did a good job weaving the theme into the game. So looks amazing. I did not back it on Kickstarter, but it seems great. I love to play it and I would love to have a copy. Number eight, Endless Winter Paleo Americans. Now you already know that I am so excited about Endless Winter. It is going to be my favorite game of all time. I'm calling it right now, um, but I backed it on Kickstarter and it should be here by the end of this summer. So I am uh, superbly, profoundly excited about this game look at these components and the trays and the resin oh man they just they did not spare any expense with components i am so excited i went totally all in um the first kickstarter game i ever backed uh, in my entire life but i've played it on tabletop simulator i helped um play test the game and stuff it, it's just so good and i am beyond thrilled to be so close to having this game in my hands um, yeah, so that's Endless Winter. Uh, it's in my want to buy. I mean, I guess I have bought it or whatever, paid for it, but uh, I don't have it yet. So, so excited. If you want to watch videos about Endless Winter, you can check them out uh, right there. It's going to be an amazing game. Number nine, Haller Tal. This is one of the most recent Uwe Rosenberg games, and it's got a lot of those Uwe tropes. It's agrarian themed. You're planting crops and you're doing worker placement, of course. You know, it's a Rosenberg game, but uh, I played it on Tabletop Simulator and it was a lot of fun. You're planting these crops in your fields and uh, if you let them sit idle they kind of become more fertile but if you over cultivate them that's bad for the farms which is kind of an interesting idea and then over the course of the game as you complete these different um, oh not trades per se but you want to kind of um, fulfill these orders basically with the carpentry and the brew house as you do that you will move these little small houses over to the right and then this big house can move to the right, which gives you a lot of points. Thematically, I have no idea what that means. I don't know what's happening. You're moving these rocks out of the way as well. Who knows? And you're collecting rings. I don't know. I don't question it, but that's uh, the premise of the game. And it's great. It's great. There's the worker placement board over there and those blue cubes are your workers. Um, yeah, you know, thematically, I don't know if it's very strong uh, thematically uh, tying in things, but it's great. The mechanics are great and it's very clever. So that's Hallertau in my want to buy list. Number 10, Hive Pocket Edition. Now, this is a very recent addition to my want to buy list. Hannah and I were at the beach recently and I was like, man, it'd be nice if there was a game we could play at the beach on the sand, you know, some something where the components wouldn't get messed up by the humidity or the sand or anything. And Hive Pocket is that game. Look, they're playing it in the grass, in the dirt, and it's about bugs, which is awesome. And yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, chess in a way. Each different animal can move in its own unique ways and you are trying to surround the other player's queen bee is the idea. So um, here's a little dog playing Hive Pocket, which is really cute. But anyway, uh, yeah, it, it's a very strategic tactical maneuvering thing where you hop over other pieces and surround other pieces and and all kinds of things so uh, but again most importantly you don't need a board it's these big chunky acrylic I guess pieces so you can throw them in the sand throw them in the ocean whatever and it'll be fine so uh, and, and pocket edition is just a little bit smaller so a great game for the beach and I just haven't pulled the trigger yet but I should because I'm sure we'll be going to the beach again and I'd love to have it so uh, this will probably end up in my uh, shop cart uh, very soon. Number 11, Meadow. Now, I don't know too much about this game, but everybody seems to love this game. It's beautiful. It's got some uh, beautiful, gorgeous art. I love this so much. Who is 
the artist. Um, Carolina Kijak and one other person, but look at this art. Oh my gosh, I love it. It's got a little shrew looking mouse looking person here. We got some uh, mushrooms. Oh, beautiful. And the mechanism seems very, uh, seem very interesting. So what you're going to do, if I can go back here, is um, you have this board with these cards and then you're going to take your little arrow and pick cards kind of along that way, kind of like Cat Lady actually. But uh, I believe that's sort of the idea. And you're collecting sets and things like that. And some of them um, exist in different seasons, I think it is. I'm not sure. I don't know as much about this game as I should, but it looks beautiful and I knew that Hannah and I would really enjoy this game. So uh, it's in my wish list. It looks amazing. That's Meadow. Number 12 is Neanderthal by Phil Eklund. And the only thing I really know about this designer is that he makes these really thematically immersive, research-driven board games that, that really tie in the current research with the board game's topic. And this game is no exception, of course. Take a look at this Neanderthal over there. We have a uh, vocal Cro-Magnon, Homo sapiens, vocal Neanderthal, Homo neanderthalensis, and Homo heidelbergensis over there. And the way the brains are evolving and developing, I find that extraordinarily fascinating. Uh, again, what an amazing theme for a board game. And look, uh, you're, I guess, migrating with your population and there's events happening and there's animals for you to hunt and it, 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 it changes your brain size and shape and ability and, and language and, and communication. Oh my goodness gracious. Um, looks amazing. I added this to my list forever ago and kind of forgot about it, but it looks absolutely captivating. I really love this theme, of course, uh, human origins and where we come from and things like that. Sapiens is an amazing book if you're looking to explore this topic, but Neanderthal looks amazing. I, I, I should just get this game. Number 13, I can't pronounce, we'll say Orléans. And uh, yes, it's set in medieval France, I believe. Yes, and it's a bag building game. I played this, I think just once, but I thought it was great. So you're pulling out these different um, workers, um, specialists from your bag, like monks and shepherds and things, if I remember correctly, and they're going out into town and doing these different um, actions at the pharmacy and the castle and the laboratory. And yeah, you need food. And I know there's like famine and stuff and you collect money. Oh, and yes, there's these trade routes where you can get different resources and things. It's been a long time since I've played, but I remember it being really fun. And I'd love to play this again. I know that there's uh, an expansion. There's this Orleans Stories. I think that has... It doesn't have a solo mode, but I think it's co-op. I'm not sure, but it's got sort of a campaign mode thing. Anyways, it looks amazing, and I know that the base game is so much fun. I would love to have that in my collection. Number 14 is Planet. Oh my gosh, this is such a great game. I've played it several times. Uh, Han and I have played it twice. It's so clever. So everybody gets this 3D uh, magnetic planet that's totally blank, um, empty at first. And then you draft these uh, hexagonal tiles and you stick them magnetically to your planet and you end up with this 3D normally be a board, but this 3D uh, globe with the, these different biomes. And the whole point of it is that you have these animals that have kind of environmental preferences, right? Like the orca wants to be in a big water biome that's touching some ice, right? And this raccoon wants to be in the woodlands, but also next to some clay or something anyway and the bears and the jellyfish oh my goodness yes and the wolves and the seals it's all great it's just so great what an awesome theme and that 3d globe i mean to look at it at the end everybody wins because you have this really neat earth that you created out of nothing it's so much fun i love planet and i don't have it so that's why it's in my list Number 15 is Project L. This is another game that I've played a few times and I recently played a three player game with Hannah and she kicked our butts at this game. So uh, in this game, you've got these polyomino tiles and you are using those tiles to complete these different uh, shapes that you have on these cards, right? And you score this many points for completing the shape. And this is the best part, by um, completing that shape, you also get one new shape, usually like the T shape or the small line or a small square and when you complete one of those uh objectives those cards you get those tiles back so in the beginning i think you only start with two really dinky little tiles but along the way you get these more and more pieces stronger better pieces like the ones shown here it's fantastic and the goal of the game is to complete 
a whole bunch of these objective cards. It's great, it's super simple. I love it, it's really satisfying because it kind of builds up to a climax, but that's Project L. I will buy this game very soon. Number 16 is Royals. I played this a long, long time ago, and I remember it being like a better ticket to ride, essentially, and that's what it is, right? So if you take a look, you've got uh, these cards, you're collecting different colored cards, like ticket to ride, yellows and blues and greens, and you're gonna be spending them to uh, assert influence in different areas on the board. Let me show you, right? So you've got Madrid, you've got Valencia, and by playing cards of a certain set, I think you can put your cubes out in these different cities, and it's an area majority thing, right? So if I have a lot of influence in Munich, I can get that many points, and then you also gain influence with these nobles the princess and the duke and the cardinal and so on and so forth but yeah i couldn't tell you too much about it, it looks like there's three different rounds scoring rounds but essentially it's it's you know set collection in your hand and then you use those sets to assert influence over this european map so that is uh this game number 17 speaking of fairly easy to teach area control games set in medieval europe we have rurik dawn of kiev uh designed by stan kordonsky same designer as endless winner all right uh this game is great i've played it twice i think um you've got these dudes on the map and you are kind of uh, assembling into these uh, assembling them into these different regions to assert influence and building these buildings. Uh, you've got your leader that goes along as well. You've got barbarians to take over and gain resources from them. Uh, and there's this thing called action programming, which is what the game um, is, is that's the crux of the game. So there's this action board of things you can do and you're auctioning with these numbered meeples, uh, putting them out and uh, kind of kind of determining your uh, priorities for your actions. It's a little bit hard to explain, but the resolution is uh, intuitive, but also it's a lot to think about the order that you're gonna resolve these things, but there's mustering, moving, attacking, taxing, building, and scheming. S fairly simple action set, but oh, there's a lot to it. It's very, very good. Um, yeah, simple rule set, but just so much fun. Uh, yeah, Rurik, it's amazing. Number 18, Tabanusi Builders of Ur. This is another tea game, this time designed by David Spada and Daniela Tassini. I love games like Teotihuacan. I really liked Origins First Builders, and this promises to be a game in that same vein. Uh, I've watched so many videos about this game, you know, rules videos and uh, playthroughs and reviews, and it just, I I think what it is is it just looks so beautiful look at these colors and the buildings and the ziggurats and the map and the river flowing through oh my gosh it just looks so amazing components look just lovely of course and the dice are your workers which is kind of how these games work uh these board and dice games anyway it looks just absolutely splendid every time i see a picture of this game anywhere online i'm like oh what is this game oh yeah it's tabanusi i should buy it um i'm just a little on the fence i, I have teotihuacan and there's a lot of similarities there's a lot of differences too but are they good differences i'm not sold i'm not sold yet so i'll just have to keep mulling it over and maybe i'll end up buying it maybe i won't but it just looks gorgeous that's tabanusi Builders of Ur. Almost done, number 19 is Terramara. Now, people do not talk about this game nearly enough. I don't know why. It came out in 2019. It looks absolutely phenomenal. Art by Michael Menzel, same as Stone Age, of course, one of my favorite games. And it is set in the Bronze Age in Italy. And look, you've got these meeples and you've got this action board, but here is the really brilliant part about it. So it's worker placement. You send your workers out and you do some stuff, simple. But Here's what's really interesting at the core of the game. There are these really powerful actions that you can take, oh my goodness, that are at the bottom of the board, but you only get your workers back at the end of the round um, from top to bottom. So after the first round, you take the topmost tile and you get the workers from that tile back. So you can take an action, you know, uh, let's say one, two, three, four rows down and get some really cool benefits, but you're not gonna get that worker back for four rounds. It's not good, right? It's amazing. I th what a cool concept. And those tiles flip over, I believe. And then there's also this like river track that you're going down, but then you also have a wagon that's going down like the sides of the board. It's just incredible. And each person has their own character. Like, like, uh, let me show you. So you have this person card. Oh, this is a technology. Anyway, you have this person card and they start as a child, right? And they have special abilities, I think. But eventually your child is going to grow up and you have some say over when that happens and then they have different abilities uh 
it's just what a cool concept. How, how thematic and cool to have like a growing older element in the game. Anyway, seems totally very innovative, very uh, fantastic and promising. And people just don't talk about it. It's also hard to find. So that's Terramar. I would love to get my hands on this game. Number 20 is Tiny Towns. This is a game that I've been considering buying for a very long time. I've been on the fence for a while now. Let's take a look at this game. So uh, on your turn, you are going to pick a... On your turn, you are going to call out one of these uh, resource colors. So, for example, maybe uh, blue or gray or brown or pink, and they correspond to wood and stone and stuff like that. Um, and then you're going to put those cubes, everyone's going to put that corresponding cube resource on their board like so. Now, when you have your cubes in a certain arrangement like this, you could build the... Uh, let's see, you could build the factory or the shed or the chapel or the cottage, right? So uh, as you complete these different arrangements, you get to put a building down and then they're going to score points. And some of them are contingent to things that they're around or other things in your town. And that's the basic premise. You try to win points by constructing the best town with all these buildings. And you have a special building you can build like a monument. And that's the gist. Super simple. It's weighted 2.06 out of 5 on the complexity rating, which is like a perfect family weight game. So it seems great. I think my family would really like this game, but I just uh, haven't bought it yet. And finally, number 21 is Verdant. This is a Kickstarter game. You can find it in Late Pledge right now if you want to. I saw it on Kickstarter and instantly was hooked by the theme and the art. Let's take a look. So in this game, you uh, have houseplants and your goal is to make them thrive. That's literally all there is to it. So uh, you've got uh, bush lilies and mistletoe cactus and false shamrocks and a uh, sensitive plant and you are going to be watering it and taking care of it and giving it proper sunlight which is really interesting. So you need to put uh, plants that need lots of sunlight in a room that gets lots of sun. It's it's just so cute and cozy and I, I instantly knew that Hannah would love this game. She is all about house plants and especially these monstera leaves i love that that's the the tokens for verdancy in this game it seems so lovely oh yes and it comes with different pots so each plant that you plant can be in its own separate uh, pot and they name the plants and you can learn about the different plants o ostensibly let me take a look yeah look at that I mean how cool is it? it it's got that wingspan vibe of you know learning about birds or in this case plants as you play a game and, and what's better than that I love it, it's just so cozy and great art look at this art oh my gosh I love it it reminds me of succulent another really fantastic game but anyways that's verdant you should back it uh if you're if you uh, seem like you would like uh this game and that is it all 21 games in my current want to buy list on board game geek if i really thought about it, there's probably more that i you know could add to that list but that was just what was on there right now um and they're fantastic games like i can't wait to play or get all of those different games and i would love to know by the way what games are on your want to buy list let me know in the comments what games are in your wish list give me a whole list i would love to know more about what games you're in to. And in the meantime, of course, have a wonderful week. Take care and happy gaming. Bye. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, if you enjoy wishlist videos like this, Jenna over at the Board Game Garden made an amazing one. You can check it out right there. If you want to know more about any of the games in my collection or every game in my collection, you can watch my video right there. Okay, that's it. Goodbye. For real. Bye. <laughs>